are the benefits between an ECVT transmission? And how is it similar to the CVT? And we know that the Ford Maverick is going to have the ECVT, which is which is uh, more efficient than just the CVT. But there's still maintenance involved. I hope you guys enjoy this video, and thanks for coming by. Let's take a close look at the uh, Maverick CVT transmission. Now the CVT transmission for Ford is made by a company named Jetco. Partially owned and operated by Toyota, the Ford CVT continuously variable transmission is one of those uh, few emerging technologies that has been outperforming expectations. Now, like most Ford transmissions, now this unit has been widely outsourced to a specialized manufacturer, one which specializes in just these sorts of powertrain solutions. Now this approach appears to bear fruit in the CVT as most Ford mechanics report seeing far fewer CVTs in the service than the standard gear types. Now part of the reason for the CVT reliability is the fact that it is a chain driven unit, very similar in design to those like Porsche. Now unlike uh, the cheaper built driven CVTs originally designed for lawn tractors and golf carts, the, t the train driven CVT doesn't slip while uh, transferring power using a set of expanding and contracting gears to vary ratios. Now this makes the, the uh, Ford, or must say Jetco CVT, one of the best and strongest on the market. And it's only rarely, it has really let people down and by a few components involved that are manufactured by Ford itself. But it doesn't let you down and some of the components are manufactured by Ford. Now, CVT relies heavily on computers to function. It has very few mechanical redundancies. Engineered into its design, failure of any associated sensor will result in the transmission malfunction. And the most common of which to fail is the uh, paddle mounted position sensor. Since the freestyle uses uh, drive by wire technology, it relies on this sensor to tell the vehicle how hard you are applying the throttle. Now, the transmission requires this information to function and without it, it will simply refuse to move the vehicle. Now solid state computers are among the most reliable machines on the planet. However, sometime time again, sometime they do fail. Now the best designed circuit board uses a few tight tolerances and, and tiny manufacturers defects can worsen exponentially over time, causing failure. Now one of the few common failures of a CVT equipped Ford's is the transmission control computer, which is covered under the vehicle 36,000 mile warranty. And I believe that piece of equipment is expensive too as well. But that really shouldn't happen. But if it does, you got 36,000 mile warranty. Now mechanical failures, there are no real trends in terms of CVT mechanical failures since the CVT has fewer moving parts than a standard six-speed automatic. There really aren't too many things that can go wrong with this Maverick uh, transmission lies. There are about a few number of breakage reported for any one of the CVT components across the board, meaning that there are more than likely manufacturing defects not due to any inherent weakness in the design. So this is awesome. Now let's talk about, I mean, this is awesome for the Maverick, but could there be what they call overpower failures? Now, if you follow the manual recommended service schedule, the Jetco CVT or Ford, trans, the transmission should outlive the engine. Now, one of the few things one can do to break a CVT is drastically increasing engine power by installing a turbocharger, supercharger, or nitrous. Don't do that. That'll kill your transmission. Even so, the CVT is good for about an extra 50 feet. Or <laughs> not 50 feet, that's 50 feet pounds of torque over what the uh, stock engine can produce. But any more than that, you're guaranteed to need a ride home. So don't be adding too many additional things onto this Maverick. As far as power, you will have problems. This is the CVT in the Maverick. Now the CVT transmission, reliability, how it works and how to maintain it. 
Now CVTs are different from regular cars. And reliability issues of it is a false perception among car buyers. Now in most cases, they're reliable as a traditional automatic or manual uh, drive vehicles. All available evidence indicates that the vehicle with CVT transmissions do not re really suffer from any poor reliability issues. Now there are some well-known examples of reliability issues, especially in earlier generation CVT equipped automobiles. But as the technology improved and improved, and in this case with Jetco, who has a strong, strong machine background, Now, today's CVT-based vehicles are widely produced across the global automotive industry. High standards, reliability, and the performance is just great. Now, in some decisions, they may be more prone to failure than the regular transmissions. They have a life expectancy of 100,000 miles. Now, if you think about buying a car equipped with a CVT system, you should be aware that the uh, pros and cons of the transmission, too, as well. Now, if one thought about a CVT transmission, you can think about a system that um, uses step gears, like to transfer power by moving up and down the flight of stairs. A CVT transmission system is stepless. It's like a ramp, smoothly and continuously transferring power without the need for up or down shifts to reach peak power. Now, with manual gear shift, the traditional um, automatic gears, the driver determines what gear goes in, but the CVT is an only variable transmission. It's like having one fluid gear that can be that can keep changing to suit all the driver's needs. They're known as stepless transmission systems because you don't feel shifts from gear to gear like the traditional uh, base transmission. Now, continuously variable transmissions operate through a system of pulleys or rollers instead of gears. One pulley connects to the engine, the other to the transmission through a clever mechanism. Now, the pulleys are able to adjust as needed to stay in the idea range needed to distribute power from the engine to the vehicle. So this is just fantastic folks. Now the CVT, as we said earlier, transmissions, they last about a um, hundred thousand miles. Now CVT transmissions aren't unreliable. They're reliable. They started to use them because they're lightweight, affordable. But increased liability causes them to include CVTs more and more and more, as you see here in the uh, Maverick. There have been some badly designed CVT transmissions and leading to perception of reliability and issues with some cars. Now, the most famous example being Nissan, which, of course, was made by Jetco, but Jetco did improve on their CVT transmission. Nissan was accused of designing inadequate cooling systems for its transmissions in a few generations of its CTV vehicles. Now, Nissan owners uh, recommended to change transmission fluid as often as 30,000 miles. And then the BMW Mini had problems. And most of the problematic CVTs are no longer on the road. So that fear is gone, folks. Again, it's back to maintaining a CVT. Now, CVTs, it's an assumption that they are reliable, but that's not true. But they are less able to handle neglect, so you don't want to be neglectful. Now, driving for a long period of time without proper transmission fluid or not getting the transmission flush when it's due is more likely to lead to failure. Now, a regular automobile might be able to handle that neglect better. 
Now there are a few things you can do to increase the lifespan of the CVT. Now avoid shifting from reverse to drive. Putting the vehicle in the drive straight from the uh, reverse gear while still backing up is rough on the transmission. Now if driving a CVT, it's a good idea to be careful when inching slowly in traffic too as well. Now change the transmission fluid regularly every 30,000 miles or just follow your warranty, especially in harsh climates. Now when a CVT heats up, it can vibrate excessively causing loss of power, jerking, slipping, coolant leaks, the CVT failure or CVT error message being displayed. So that's something you just had to think about it. Now, and the question remains, uh, CVT transmission uh, benefits. Again, it's smooth. It's reliable. Again, like I said, up to 100,000 miles. And it's cost-cutting for manufacturers as well. Fuel efficiency is also important with CVTs. They tend to be more fuel efficient on the, tra the, uh, the transmission. It's lighter than a traditional automatic and smooth operation. Puts less demand on the engine. Having a few, uh, uh, fuel efficiency is really important. You can get up to 40 miles per gallon with the CVT. And that's why they use it. And because of the lack of gearing, the acceleration is also good. It's easier for it to move. It's better at taking off from a standing position. And also climbing uphill. It allows it to um, stay in the idea range for a longer period of time. And it's also got a smooth ride too as well. So that's something to think about. There are a few other things to think about too with the CVT transmission. Now back to the, uh, the negative parts as far as the disadvantages. Of course, it's high repair and maintenance costs. Most CVTs depend on steel builds or I must have to say that steel chains are chain driven. Now when subject to excessive wear and tear, the transmission can be, can, it can completely fail. Now it can be expensive to repair and replace when compared to conventional automatic transmissions. And you're gonna need a trained mechanic to build it. Now there's also a lack of power. They can suffer from a lack of power offered in uh, off-road conditions where uh, quick gear changes are needed. And they're designed for less powerful four-cylinder engines. And there are limits on the engine that can work with CVTs in terms of power and size. They also subject to overheating. Now, type of slipping and shuddering, the sudden loss of acceleration. And you get that, dr that, that uh, droning sound a lot of people don't like. I Many drivers tend to not like that, especially during um, acceleration. It forces the engine to continuously run at a constantly high RPM as it accelerates. And it doesn't feel the same as an automatic transmission or a manual transmission, of course. So that's, if you prefer a sportier driving experience, the lack of gears is going to make it, you know, it's not going to make it so cool. Now the coming CVT type of manufacturers in the market are the frictionless stepless type transmissions using a, a build or a chain to transfer power. Then you have the electric CVTs or the eCVTs or hybrid transmissions. This is what's in this one. Now these are systems that use a motor or a generator for power transmission. That's what you got here, the eCVT. That's what I believe this one is. I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. Hydrostatic CVTs uses pumps to control fluid flow, which produces a rotational motion. And again, last but least, is the CVT right for you? Of course, being a transmission, being a core component of a vehicle, of this particular vehicle. But if you're looking for a top of the line performance engine, then a CVT will be most likely unlikely. But if you're looking, if you have something like this, just just nice and convenient and it gets the job done, it would be okay. Now the old CVTs are not the, like the hybrid ECVT that you that you'll have in the uh, Maverick. Now the transmissions have planetary gears set, but the racial change in the old CVTs is done mostly by the sheaves diameter that the built rides in. But the ECVTs have no sheaves or belts 
and essentially in one high gear all the time. And the torque and the power transfer is controlled by electrically varying the torque on the motor generator on the center, what they call the sun gear, which is big, or the planetary gear. Now the MG1 routinely turns in either direction as a motor or a generator and is precisely controlled to make these transmissions the smoothest ever. There's also a little wear. Now the Ford ECVT architecture is different from all the other brands where the um, where the MGs are on the same axis. The Ford MG2, the traction and the regeneration braking device is parallel to the MG1 and, and the, the ECVT and connected by the uh, gear train. It's considerably bigger and designed for higher power. Planetary gear is essentially two speed devices depending on what part is locked by uh, bands of clutches. It's continuous because the locking device in the MG1 is not on or off but also anywhere in between because of this variable torque and that's what makes this different. So this is going to be more reliable than just a regular CVT because it is the ECVT. That's what makes this awesome, folks. So don't worry about this, the um, ECVT in the Ford. It's going to be able to get the job done. But the longevity being at that 100,000 miles seems it may be right. And getting maintenance is very important. Uh, thanks for watching and may you have a great, awesome day. Hey you guys, say Automotive Reviews. Remember, like, share, subscribe. And thanks for coming to the channel. I appreciate you. Until then, we out.